Okay, guys, I think we are going live. Sorry about that. The last second, my cat decided to come up and start meowing at the door. So I just went to let him in real quick. So if you hear any meowing in the background, it's just him. So today we're gonna to work on this flower picture. I was looking for a nice reference photo and I saw this one and I just absolutely loved it. So um, this is what we're gonna do. I have the reference picture and the line sketch down below that you can use. I am using pastel matte today. This is white pastel matte. And I have my pan pastels that we're gonna start with for the background. And then we may transition to our pastel pencils for the flower. We'll see how it goes. Yes, I just loved the colors in this reference photo, EB. I was gonna do one with a butterfly in it, but when I saw this picture, it just had to be this one. So I'm just gonna mention the supplies I'm using real quick and then we'll get right into this. So I've got um, my pan pastels. This is titanium white, Hansa yellow, Derelide yellow, yellow ochre, magenta, red iron oxide, permanent red, orange, violet, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, turquoise, bright yellow green, chromium oxide green, permanent green, phthalo green, burnt sienna, raw umber, black, and neutral gray. And this is the set that I'm using. So this is the 20 color set and these are the pure colors. So there's no tints in this, there's no darks or extra darks. Um, and to be honest, this is really all you need because if you mix white with the color, you get the tinted version. If you mix black with the color, you get the darker version. So that's why I just bought the 20 set. I've also got some of these soft tools that I use and this is just um, a plastic container that I got at Michael's and it just holds all my soft tools. Now, depending on the size of the piece that I'm using, I might pick one of these bigger tools or these little tools. And then we've got some of these handheld tools here. So I've got some of these ready to go just in case I wanna use them for blending or maybe um, when we get to the flower part itself. But I'm probably gonna stick with just this little sponge tool for the background. And I did manage to get the reference photo on the screen here, so hopefully that helps you guys out. And let me know if this is zoomed in enough for you because I did wanna show my pan pastels while we're working. And then once we get to the flower, I can zoom in even more. Yes, lots of beautiful colors. So anybody that's watching this live or if you're watching the replay, feel free to ask any questions as we're going and I will try to answer them the best that I can. And I've got this little glassine piece of paper here just to help protect so that I'm not, you know, spudging my hands all over the piece. Um, great size to keep, see the colors in the artwork. Okay, perfect. And then I've also got some pieces of paper towel off to the side here. And this is what I'm going to use to just uh, wipe my, my pastel thing off to change colors. And I'm just going to get my reference photo up here real quick and I'm gonna get started. So in, in the background here, I really like some of the colors. I think I'm gonna start up here with some of those reds, oranges, yellows, and, uh, and then there's some blue colors in here, but I think I'm gonna go for more of a teal blue because I love teal with like magentas and oranges and stuff. So that'll be the color that I use, but I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, just a hint of this magenta here. And I'm just gonna get a little bit on my sponge and I'm gonna start putting it in up here. Now, I don't want these colors to be too, too bright um, because it will contrast with our flower. So since I'm using pastel matte, we'll probably have to do a couple of layers of this and we can always go in and mute them down and tone them down after. But I'm gonna get that, wipe it off, and then I'm gonna go in with my permanent red And I'm gonna start putting this color in here. And you don't wanna to press too hard or push too hard with your tools on the pastel mat uh, because it can 
rip your tools because the pastel mat is a little bit textured. It can end up ripping up some of your sponge. I'm gonna grab some of that orange. I'm gonna start putting this in here. And I'm not like I'm not worried too too much about the placement right now. We just want to get some colors down onto the paper. Might be lurking. I've got to go do dishes soon. Okay, no problem, EB. And I will try to catch some of your stream after as well on Twitch. And because I wanted to get up to the edges of this pastel mat, I just have some Bristol card underneath so that I'm not getting the pan pastels over um, all over my desk here. And I just took pieces of tape and taped it to the back so that it would hold it down flat because pastel mat has a tendency to sort of curl up a little bit. So I'm sort of just taking this orange over top of all the, the colors that we've already got down. And we might have to do, you know, a couple of layers for the background here, depending how saturated we want some of those colors to be. So again, I'm going to wipe off any of that excess orange. And I'm going to go in with my uh, Daralide Yellow. I'm never going to pronounce that correctly, but I'm going to start getting some of this in here. And I'm sort of just patting and lightly dragging it. How was my week? My week was good. It was pretty boring though. We didn't really do too much. I worked, you know, so there's that. How was your week, EB? And I'm just sort of following sort of where I see this. So this is another flower back here in the background and it's sort of coming down. So I'm gonna start bringing this yellow color down um, just a little bit. My background's a little bit bigger than the reference photo, I think, because I'm working on a nine by 12. So I'll have to, you know, adjust it slightly. My boss's party was wonderful. My week other than that was good. Oh, well, that's good. That's good, I'm glad you had a good week. Okay, so I'm just bringing the same yellow color down and I'm gonna sort of work this um, pretty close to this little leaf here. Petal, I guess it's a petal. Now I did use that masking film to mask out the flower and when you're going up against masking film, instead of dragging your tool into it this way, I would suggest to drag your tool away from it and that way you're not going to risk um, lifting up the masking film. So I'm going to bring this yellow color down here a little bit more. Yesterday I masked, messed up with jelly gouache. It was awesome, loved the artwork. I made, took a page from Casey Golden. Oh, okay. What do you mean you messed up with the jelly gouache? take some in here. So I'm sort of looking where the, the yellow parts in the flower is. And because yellow is sort of a lighter color, I know a lot of the other colors will go over top of it and transition well. So I'm not too worried about that right now. Oh, good morning, Lisa. Thank you so much for joining. Happy to see you here. Oh, you were messing with the jelly gouache. You didn't mess up. Oh, I see. I just read that incorrectly. Sorry. OK. 
Okay. Okay, so I pretty much only see this yellow color like up in this area. There's this sort of yellow thing coming along here, but I don't like that, so I'm not gonna put it into my picture. I see a tiny little bit of yellows down here. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that in, but I don't want too much because we've got some yellows going on in our flower here. So that's gonna, I don't want it to compete with it, but I'm gonna get sort of like an under glaze of this yellow. And then when we go over top with some greens here, it will just brighten them up a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that yellow off. And I think I'm gonna go back in with that magenta color and just start bringing it down a little bit more where I see it. Now that we've got our yellows in and I know I need to bring everything down more um, because I've got more background in my picture than what the reference is. But we'll fill up a lot of the space here with those greens and that uh, teal color. Where am I, magenta? And the nice thing when doing a blurry background like this is you don't have to be like super precise where everything is because you want it to all blur out together, right? Just gonna bring that magenta color over that way a little bit. Almost like we're creating some of those like petals in the background. And I like using these soft tools with the pan pastels or even with any uh, soft pastels that you're using because you can see it's really like working that pastel into the paper. So on the outside here, we're getting little bits of pastel, but we're not really getting that on the paper here. So it works really nicely to push it in. And then you're not getting so much dust um, coming off of it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that magenta off now onto my paper towel and I'm going to go back in with just a little bit of the red and redden up a couple of these areas and drag this red color down just a bit a little bit over here And at this point, just have fun. You could use whatever colors that you want for this. You don't necessarily have to use the same colors that are in the reference photo, um, but you can really have some fun with this. I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna go in for my orange. And I know I've gotta drag this down just a bit. And I'm overlapping the colors too to help them blend more. And so instead of pushing really hard, when I notice there's no more pigment coming off of my sponge, I just dip back in and get more.
And the more layers you get on the pastel mat, you'll notice it's it's blending nicer. It's easier, you know, to lay down the color because this tooth is starting to get filled up a little bit. So again, I'm just doing little dabbing motions, getting things to blend out. I'm gonna orange in this up a little bit. Orange in, is that a word? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wipe those off again. I just want my magenta to be brighter at the top here and then fade down into some of these colors. It's a word now. <laughs> yup, yup. It's, I officially made it a word, okay. And you can see how when we get more pigment on the paper, it just blends out a lot nicer. Okay. So again, I'm gonna wipe that off and I'm gonna go back into my yellow. I wanna bring a little bit more yellow up into some of these areas. Well, apparently it didn't wipe off good enough. So I'm really, really gonna wipe that off. And if you find that, you know, maybe this is getting a little bit too dark, you can always switch to another end. But there, after you give it a good wipe, it's usually pretty good. And I'm basically just using this yellow to sort of blend the edges of some of these colors out and where we're gonna start transitioning into our greens. So I'm gonna get some of this yellow around a lot of these edges. Because if we go with the green right on top where the red is, it's not gonna mix that well. And I'm leaving some of that space there for our blues and greens. And I'm just, every time I pause, I'm sort of looking at the reference photo, assessing where I want my colors to go. Okay, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it, right there. I'm gonna wipe that off as much as I can on my paper towel. So if you guys can see here, I'll grab my paper towel just so you can see how I'm wiping it off. I just take it and wipe it off like this until it gets, you know, pretty clear. And since we're blending a lot of these colors together anyway, it doesn't matter if it's completely cleared off, but now where I wanna to transition to a different color, like the, 
I think I might actually go in with the teal and get some of that teal color in. I'm going to switch to a cleaner side. And these two, you can wash them out under the sink afterwards and it'll be, you know, it'll get rid of, it'll stain the sponge still, like the pastel will stain the sponge, but it is reusable. So you can go ahead and wash it under the sink afterwards. And then when you go to put colors down, there will be no colors left over from before, which is really nice. So I really want to get some of this teal color in here in some places, um, just so I can start mapping out some of these colors where I want it to go. And I love doing these blurry backgrounds because you can really do pretty much whatever you want. You know, because it's it doesn't have to look too specific. You've just got to get some colors in there, get them blended together. And once we get more on, this is going to start looking a little bit better. It might look like a hot mess right now, but trust the process. <laughs> Actually, I might get a little bit of that yellow coming down here under. And I want to get some of this color around these edges because it's going to look really nice up against the... Um, the magenta colors that we're going to use in the flower and I did go ahead and pick out some of my pastel pencils so I do have the colors of those down in the description below just in case we got you know really far today with this but we'll see how we go loving the artwork so far the colors are beautiful well thank you so much EB yeah, these are definitely uh, some of my favorite colors to use. I can bring this yellow down a little bit more here so there's a little bit yellow there so we'll get that there's sort of some darkness going on up here so I'm gonna get this teal and then we'll go over top with a dark uh, green as well just to darken up this area in here it's like a shadow within that flower but I want to go even like I'm going a little more blurry than the background, so we'll see. See how that goes. Okay, I'm gonna get some of this color up here too. gotta figure out how to get my reference photo to stop going out I've got it on like my TV over here well, that's sliding a little bit I just noticed and every 10 minutes or every 20 minutes um, the reference photo kicks out it's like the TV goes to a black screen so I gotta like keep putting it on good morning Biden's sugar daddy <laughs> good morning to you thank you for joining us We are working on pastels today. And this is definitely gonna take two, at least two um, times, like two streams to get done. <laughs> you love his screen name so funny, yeah. That's why I laughed a little bit saying it. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, now I'm gonna get some in here. And you can see how like this masking film just makes it so easy because I can go right over the edges. And when we go to peel this up, it's just gonna be like nice crisp edges and it's just gonna be beautiful. <laughs> And this teal color, like alongside of those magentas, oh, it's just gorgeous. Well, I think it's just gorgeous. Where you can, where can you pick the film up at? Okay, so I do have a link down below um, for Amazon. I've got mine on Amazon. Now that's Amazon Canada but you can get it, you know, on the US Amazon, I'm pretty sure. Um, just look up, so if you click on the link and then you copy and paste that name, whatever it's called, I think it's Frisket Masking Film and you look on Amazon, I've seen it available on there. Um, and I think some art stores sell it, like local art stores, uh, but I've, I've never seen it at like Michael's or something like that. We don't have a Hobby Lobby here, but I don't believe I've seen it at Michael's, but I could be wrong. You did see it after asking, of course. Yeah, I tried to link as much as I could uh, down in the description below. But of course, I've you know, you can never have everything right. Okay, so I think I've got some teal in there for sure. So I'm just gonna wipe that off like I did with the other ones. Wipe it off until it's just about clean. And I think I'm gonna start going in and getting some of the darker greens in here and then we'll do our lighter greens and then we'll kind of see where we're at. So I'm gonna go in with the phalo green and depending how bright this is, I might throw another color in there. I don't hate that. Might mix the phalo green with a little bit of the permanent green. Yeah, just to get it more of like a foresty green type color. But again, you use whatever green that you like. Loving that mix of color, the, um, the phalo green and the permanent green. Yeah, me too. I really like that. And that's how you know, like you, you put something down and you go, nope, not the right color. Let's try something else. Like a lot of people are really worried about, I have to have the right color or I need to know the right color. It's just experimentation, really. It's more the values that you're gonna get that are going to make your piece realistic, right? Are your lights light enough? Are your darks dark enough? That's really gonna give you the, the realism that you're looking for in pieces. And it also takes time. So if you want something to look realistic, you can't do one layer and expect it to, you know, look super realistic. It also takes time. So a lot of the times people just aren't finished yet. They just don't take the time to finish their work. So I'm just looking where these darks are. Oh, one of my soft tools fell on the floor, but that's okay. We don't need that <laughs> right now. And a lot of this is gonna blend out too. I just sort of wanna get those dark areas in. Um, and another thing with pastels, you know, the lights can go on top of the darks. Darks can go on top of the lights. So it's really nice when you're just starting to block things in too, that it's not 
you know, you don't have to be, again, super precise. I'm gonna make this dark here and where I've got that yellow, I'll go with my lighter green. And I'm still mixing those two colors, the phalo green and the permanent green. I'm just sort of like taking a, a tap from each of them. And yeah, it is so true, eh? A lot of people just, I find they give up way too early and it's like, well, you're, you're just not done. You know, a lot of people say, I can't do that, I can't do this, like my artwork doesn't come out good, and but you're just not done, just keep going, just keep layering. Now I'm choosing to go a little bit darker here where that yellow weird thingy is. I think it's part of maybe another flower or this one, but that little stamen or whatever this is, it doesn't show up great in front of it and I want the flower to really pop. So if you want something light to show up, you need to have it behind something dark. So that's my decision there. Art takes time, absolutely. Art can take a lot of time. And it depends on your goals too. Like some people don't like a super realistic, like I will never do hyper realism because I don't want to spend a hundred hours on something for it to look like exactly like, like a photograph. But the people that can do that, my gosh, like good on them. But I, I won't do that. Like I want my stuff to look realistic, but at the same time, you know, I'm okay if it's not like 100% realistic. Um, so it just depends what your goals are. So still mixing those two colors. I really like that mix. It's working really well. That permanent, the phalo green was just a little um, too much on its own. Now this is dark up in this corner. So I might have to go on top, maybe even with a little bit of black. We'll see. And my pastel mat have, has like a little dent in it there, but that's okay. I can always trim it down after. Oh, good morning, Colorfully Optimistic. I'm so glad you made it. How are you doing? So nice to see you here. We're just blocking in our background. We're working on the background. Ooh, I love pan pastels, yes. I do too. I haven't used my pastels in so long, so this is like really fun. Oh, you're good. That's good to hear. Okay, so I wanna save some space for our lighter greens and lighter colors, so I think I'm gonna start working down here, get some of these dark greens in. So what I'm doing is I'm just mixing the phalo green and the permanent green right now, just to get sort of like a darker green going. And then we can always adjust later as we need to. Okay. 
and I'm using white pastel mat today. I went over everything at the beginning, but just because you're just joining Colorfully, Optimi Colorfully Optimistic, I love that name and I can't pronounce it. <laughs> and if you have any questions for me or if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to ask. I will do my best to answer while I am going. Okay. So I'm gonna wipe that really good off on my piece of paper towel that I have over here. It looks tie-dye now. <laughs> yes, it does. I need to get more of those colors. Is there a set or did you buy open stock? Actually, I'm using just the uh, 20 set of pure colors. And to be honest, this is really all you need. So this is just the pure colors themselves. And if you need to tint a color, you add white. If you need to darken a color, you add black. And that's all they've done with the other colors. So I really suggest people just getting the 20 set or even just the, the 10 set of pure colors. I think there's a, a five set, but I like the 10 set because it comes with a little more colors and you can really do so much with that. All right, so I'm gonna start getting in some of these lighter greens and I'm gonna go ahead and think I'm gonna end up mixing in some of the permanent green and with the bright green because I think the bright green might be a little too much. We'll try it and see. Uh, actually, okay, for some of the areas, I do like this and then it's sort of like bright green into a, a darker green. So we'll mix the permanent green in afterwards. The pure colors. I have the skin set and a few open, but I'll look into that one. Yeah, I really, really suggest, I highly suggest the um, pure colors. So I'm going to try with that permanent green see what it looks like oh that's a little dark so I'm just going to add some more of that um, bright yellow green on top and just tone it down Because this green has a little bit of yellow in it and some green in it, it's going to mix well beside my yellows that I've used and it's going to mix well with the darker greens and the blues that we've already put down. Okay, and I'm sort of just jumping over um, a little bit. That permanent green is like really powerful. So I'm doing sort of a couple of swipes of this and just a little tiny dab of that permanent green. And I'm just trying to fill in where I see some of the lights because we don't want to lose too much of our light areas here. I might even bring maybe a little bit of that blue in through here.
So I'm sort of using this color to kind of transition in here between that, the blue and the yellow. There's just a hint of it along here. And I don't worry too much about my pan pastels getting dirty um, because really I mix a lot of the colors together anyway. So, but if that bothers you, you can always go ahead and take like a Kleenex or paper towel and just wipe the tops of them off afterwards and that will get rid of the other colors. But normally when I end up using them, I'm mixing like the same colors together anyway. So that usually doesn't bother me. Okay. So I'm going to start bringing some of this light color in down here as well. And I'm not worrying too much mixing it with the uh, permanent green right now because it's going to mix with some of these darker colors that we've already got down. So that's going to help, you know, get rid of a little bit of the brightness of it. Last time I got pastels was in an art box and I got super messy, the joy of art. Yes. And I mean, I'm not even doing anything with this hand and I'm already getting pastels on it. So <laughs> it's messy. However, the pan pastels and pastel pencils, I can do no problem. It's a lot less mess than if you were using like uh, stick form soft pastels. And for whatever reason, I just, I don't like touching stick pastels. It's not that I don't like them. I just don't like how messy my hands get when I'm using them. So I can use them. It doesn't you know, it doesn't bother me that much, but I sort of get like this, ugh, like feeling when I'm using them because I don't like my hands getting that dirty. So I'm going over top of that yellow that we've put down. It's like the chalk feeling it dries my skin out. Yes, yes, that's that's what it is. It's like it, you have like dry skin and I hate dry skin. I naturally have dry skin. So I, I absolutely hate that feeling. And I'm gonna come back. So I'm blending over my blues here a little bit um, just because I want it to really blend and I want the edges faded, but I'll come back and add some of that teal back in when I need it. I'm gonna move my glassine up. So I'm trying to hold down this artwork too so it doesn't move too much as I'm doing it. If it's moved out of frame and you guys can't see it behind the reference photo, please let me know. <laughs> Can you call me Corey? Make it easier to say. Oh, yes, I will call you Corey if I can remember that. <laughs> Is it Corey? Am I pronouncing that right? I like that name. So again, I'm making sure to cover, you know, the other colors that we've got down. 
and then we can always go in and darken those up again because some of these greens I'm going to have to darken up again. Yep, you pronounced it right. Don't worry, I forget names all the time. Okay, good, because I feel like that's my specialty, is to forget names. Now, I think it would be easier if I had, like, a face to put with the name, but, yeah. So I will try my best to remember Corey. Now, a lot of people pronounce my name wrong, and it's pronounced Naomi, but a lot of people pronounce it like Noemi and Naomi, um, different pronounces like that. So I, I get it where people pronounce my name wrong all the time. <laughs> okay, still working with that same bright yellow green. I like how it looks when it's blended with some of the other colors and then I might have to come and adjust it uh, where it's on a little bit. I know it's hard in our channels, people only see our hands. I know, right? I've done like a couple of videos um, where I've like sat and talked to the camera a little bit, but I'm just, I don't know if I'm just too self-conscious or I just, I don't know, I find it so weird to have like my face on camera. Although I do have a video coming out this week that's sort of a little bit different. I mean, it's technically kind of art related, but um, I got a snack box and so I'm trying that out. But I did do an artwork that goes along with it, so it counts as art, an art video in my... But um, I will have, so one of the things that came in the box, I did like an artwork of it, and then that'll be like a time lapse at the end of the video. So I'm counting it as an art video. I just don't feel like putting makeup on. That is so me too. I used to love, like love putting makeup on. I would get like up an hour and a half before I had to go to work to shower, put makeup on, like whatever. I'm just taking a little dab of that phthalo, uh, what is it? Yeah, permanent green again, just to green this up, just a touch more in this area. It's not such a yellowy green. Actually, maybe I'll put this down first and then I'll go on top with the other color. We'll try that. Um, but yeah, I used to take so much time in the morning to get ready. And now I don't know. It's like I hit 30 and I'm like, who really cares anymore? Does anybody care if I've got mascara on or if like you can see my eyebrows? Because I'm so pale. Um, you can hardly see <laughs> my, my eyelashes or my eyebrows. And I'm like, does anybody really care? I don't think so. So, that's me now. I don't want to show my face. I'm not the thinnest person, so I prefer to just show hands. Oh, EB, like, there are so many different body types out there. Don't even worry about that. And I don't even, like, you know, I honestly don't think anybody would judge you for that at all. And if they do, do you really want them watching your channel? Like, do they, you know... If somebody's going to treat you like that, is that really a nice person that you want around? I don't think so. You're gorgeous just the way you are. EB, I hear you when I stream. I'm like lucky if not in my PJs and there's no makeup or anything on there right now. Yes, yes, and I'm totally wearing PJs right now. So I hear you guys. No, no one's going to judge you at all. And if they do, get them out of there. <laughs> you can thank COVID to how some of us don't want to get too pretty because <laughs> who will see me? Yeah, yeah, and that's, and that's a big part of it too. I mean, I just got out of the habit of getting up and getting ready and then, I don't know, I kind of just don't care anymore. Like I care, you know, I care about my appearance. Obviously, I shower and stuff, but uh, other than that, I don't know. 
my husband's blind as a bat. He he wears glasses. And I used to ask him, you know, every time I'd get a new eyeshadow or I'd get, you know, a new mascara or blush or something like that, I'd be like, ooh, you know, how does this look? And he's like, I can't see anything. <laughs> so I don't need to really impress him. Putting on your jeans is rough, yes. And I feel like a lot of people were feeling that after, well, after COVID. I mean, obviously COVID is still kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, when everybody started having to go back to work, yeah. I bet jean, jean sales went up then, for sure. <laughs> so again, I'm just working, getting this light, bright yellow green in. And because I'm using pastel matte, it does take a lot to fill the tooth of the paper, right? So if you were using something like the Canson Me Tiens, um, you would not have to work this hard to fill in this background, for sure. It's just because, you know, pastel matte has a lot of tooth, but that also makes it easier when you're trying to do like realism and things like that. Like if you were doing an animal portrait and you needed to get, you know, for details in there, it does make it a little easier in that sense where you can get more details because you can layer more. The cases are on the rise again here. We might go into lockdown again. Who knows about school? So far we are going back, but time will tell. Yeah, and here in Canada too, because we just started the no mask thing. And personally, I'm still wearing masks, but I am a healthcare professional. I'm a nurse. So I work with a lot of vulnerable patients. Um, I am a community nurse right now. So I want to make sure that I'm not bringing any risk to my patients. So I still wear a mask when I go out to the stores and my husband is as well. But uh, surprisingly, there's a lot of people around here in Atlantic Canada that aren't in our cases all of a sudden skyrocket too. And, you know, you have to take that into account when you're making decisions like that, because obviously the cases are going to go up. However, in my area, we've noticed that it's been more people that haven't got their vaccines um, that are catching it. And a few of it is travel related too. Um, but yeah. So it's sort of, I'm kind of, you know, waiting to see if they're going to go back and say no masks again or if they're going to change, you know, stuff. I really like this, uh, this green color in the background here. So I'm just sort of filling in some places and then I'll go back in with the, the teal and the dark green and sort of adjust things as I need to. Yeah, they are starting to go back to masks here, yeah. And I know this, the states, they went uh, no masks pretty early on, I, I think. I'm going to bring some of this green up into here as well. Then I'll add a little bit more yellow in here too. Kind of coming around here, up here. Sort of just to break some of this. The US was just like we <laughs> toss masks immediately. Yep. <laughs> We're free.
So I'm sort of blending the edges here with that light green color. We are getting a new governor, so who knows what they will do when they get into office. I know, right? Sometimes that's a little bit scary because they, you know, they kind of want to make a statement when they get in and so they change all these things. Okay. So I'm kind of liking that light green there. I might just take a dab here and just sort of get a little bit of that um, permanent green in. Darken it up just a tiny bit up here. Um, EB has an art channel as well, and she does streaming on Twitch too. So she live streams on Twitch. Um, okay. So I'm just trying to get some variation in the greens in the background there. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off. Oh, your state was the last one to enforce the masks and then the first one to toss them. Yep. Yep, that happens a lot. I'm just wiping off some of that green. I'll see if I can find and subscribe. Always looking for fun stuff to binge. Yeah, she does a lot of um, like art boxes as well. So if you like watching that, um, her channel is great for that. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with this Derelide yellow, and I'm gonna fill in a little bit here. Oh, actually, I should have used the other side, whatever. I'm gonna wipe that off, and I'm gonna go back to like my more orangey side, and I'll grab the yellow from that. And I'm just gonna fill in a little bit of these places. Now, there's sort of like this brownie thing here. I don't know what that is, but I'm leaving it out. <laughs> You're so welcome, EB, for the shout out. You know, we all have to support each other as well, and I do enjoy your channel too, so. So I'm taking that yellow color and just sort of blending the edges. A bit. And Gonna bring a little bit more in here. I forgot to put some green in here, but that's okay because we'll add a little bit of orange in there as well. I sub to five art boxes this month. Let's just discuss how crazy I am. Oh my gosh, I thought uh, I thought two was a lot, so five. Um, what ones did you subscribe to, Corey? I remembered your name, by the way. <laughs> I'm subscribed to um, Paletteful Packs and Smart Art Box. And I'm sort of, sort of considering getting rid of the Paletteful one, even though I, I still really enjoy it, so I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna grab some more of this orange. And I'm just sort of continuing to blend some of these colors together.
Yeah, EB has a lot of uh, subscription boxes as well. And I love watching um, channels with subscription boxes because we all seem to take like a different stance on the prompts or use the products differently. So it's really interesting to see what everybody does with them. I'm just bringing a little bit, I'm gonna wipe that off because I want a little bit more um, pure orange down here just a little bit. And I'm gonna bring a little bit of that green in there too. Okay, wipe that off really well. I'm gonna go back in with that light, bright yellow green. And I'm gonna put some of that in here. So this is the fun part because we got a lot of the colors down. Now we can go in and start adjusting, um, brighten areas that we need to blend some of the colors together. And that's what I'm gonna do. And I thought we would get to our flower today, but I think we'll have to do the flower next week. And so we'll pull out our pastel pencils for that. And I'll be using a mix of the Stabilo, Carbothello, and the Pit Pastel Pencils. I really enjoy both of them. I like the Stabilos because a lot of those colors are very bright and vibrant, and obviously I like bright and vibrant colors. And the Pit Pastels, they've got a really good selection of like natural colors too, so I find just the two of them together work really well. Okay, I'm gonna bring some of this green towards this yellow, sort of into it, um, just to tone this yellow down a little bit. Make it a little smaller. Same over here. Um, okay, you get art snacks. No, you get, yeah, art snacks, roller box, smart art, let's make art. Oh, I've never tried the let's make art one, but I do like their channel and the sketchbook. About to get number six soon. Great watercolor box set. Seen it on YouTube channel. They did an unboxing video of it. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with that um, teal color now, or turquoise, I guess, and start adding in some of that blue then we'll go back in with our dark greens and then we'll see if we need to adjust anything. So I'm just putting this sort of where I put the blues and then I'm gonna sort of spread it out a little bit to help the colors next to it mix. And we can even take, you know, one of our soft pass tool colors, um, soft tool, sorry, and use that to help mix the colors, like mix the background even better. Cause you really want to work the pastel into the pastel mat, even though it grips it really well, you still want to work it into it. So that'll be the last thing that we do. You want to try palettefull? I really enjoy palettefull packs. Um, I think though, I think I like Smart Art just a little bit more than the palette packs, and that's why I've kind of been considering getting rid of the palette packs. Even though I've only got the two subscription boxes, it's still not cheap, especially when you're paying for shipping to like Canada, right? But I still really enjoy both of them. Um, like it sometimes. Yeah, this one had oils in it and <laughs> I've been avoiding um, doing this this month's box. I still haven't. I've, you know, done the unboxing part of it, but I haven't like done the artwork. So I'm avoiding it because I'm not a huge um, oils fan, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. 
and I'm going to do the best that I can <laughs> with it. Yeah, they're kind of hit and miss, although I have to say the Smart Art one, I think, went out just a little bit more for me. Um, I've liked a lot of their products in the box, like, more. So that's why if I got rid of one, I think it would be the palette-full one that I would get rid of and keep the Smart Art one. But I really like them both. Sponsor me, palette full, and then I don't have to get rid of you. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work, but we'll see. I, I still signed up for it next month, so I will be getting September's for sure. And then we'll just see, you know, from there how it goes. Um, but I want to get exposed to more art supplies. I can't wait to do the Smart Art Box Challenge this month. I'm struggling with the art snacks one this time. Yeah, and that's why I ended up signing up for the boxes in the first place because I really liked the concept of getting new art supplies every month. You don't know what they are and also the challenge of trying to use them together. So as you guys know with my videos for Art Smart and Palettful, I really try my best to combine all the prompts and the products into one like piece of artwork. And I really like the challenge of doing that. Sometimes it's quite difficult depending on the prompts that we get and the products that we get, but I really like the challenge of that. And of course, who doesn't like getting new, you know, new art products every month, but it's just the shipping is to Canada like ridiculous. And I'm sort of like at the point where I'm like, is it really worth it to get it? In my mind, it's still it's still kind of worth it, but yeah. I'm still just using just that teal color um, to lay in some of these blues. Again, still, I just wanna brighten them up and then I'm gonna go and blend them out into the greens a little bit more. Yeah, it took you a while, E.B., yeah. So just me, or do you think the oils were kind of more student grade? The ones that came in the Smart Art box? Was it oils in the Smart Art? I think it was oil pastels in the palette full and oils in the Smart Art. Um, and I haven't tried the oils out yet, to be honest. So I don't know. I just did the unboxing and then I kind of put it aside because I'm not a huge like oils fan, to, to be honest, but I like that they are water soluble, so there's that, um, there's that aspect to it, but. So I'm really just putting in these teals sort of where I see it in the reference photo, but also where I want it. Um, I want it sort of around the flower in different places. Cause like I said, that teal on top of the magenta or next to the magenta is really gonna pop really nicely. Okay, let's have a look here. Did I get all my blues in? that I want. I think so. And for anybody joining, this is just a piece of glassine paper that I'm using, so I'm not like smudging, hopefully the pastel all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to wipe off most of that teal, turquoise, I'm calling it teal, but it's a turquoise, it's sort of the same. And I'm just going to start blending a little bit on the edges here so that it blends in with our other colors around it. That um, we use the bright yellow green around it and then the darker green was a mix of the phthalo green and permanent green. Mm 
no for palette full ones um, is okay the ones you were talking about smart arts were the oils this month yes that's what I thought I thought smart art was the oils and I just did that unboxing this week so you'd think I would remember that um, Deborah says ice only tried you've only tried the palette full packs once two sketch boxes I've picked the ones I wanted <laughs> yeah yeah and that's nice you know you can pick the ones and hello Deborah thank you for joining me in this live stream if you have any questions please let me know I am always happy to try um, and answer questions and I'm just taking that bright yellow green again just to brighten up this area just a little bit um, down here then I'm gonna wipe off again and just start blending my colors together then we'll just go in and darken up our darkest greens again and then I think our background will be mostly done oh I've got to add a little bit of green up there I just noticed too I was saving that spot for the green and I almost forgot So when I'm blending here, I'm just very lightly like going over the edges of the colors. Just lightly. And when I'm going more back into the blue, I'm just going to wipe off any of the excess there. And because this is a burly, blurry background, you know, if our colors smudge together, it's not a big deal. That's kind of what we're going for. You would like to try the Smart Art as well, but they are pricey. They are pricey, um, but the thing that drew me to them is I've got a link on some of my Smart Art boxes unboxings um, if you want to try it for $5 off EB. So you do get the $5 off with that. However, each month, if you do their prompts, now you could do uh, each prompt separately with a different artwork, or you could do all the prompts together in one artwork that I do. And then if you tag them on their social media accounts, so like Instagram or whatever, you get um, 500 Peacock points, and those are worth an extra $5 off. So if you did the prompts each month, you get an extra $5 off your box um, each month. However, even with that $5 off, it's still, you know, expensive, right? Because you're paying for shipping and everything, but at least it's something. So that's why I'm I'm leaning more towards keeping the Smart Art over the Palette because you get that five dollars off each month, or you can save all your points up and have a box free, you know, after a few months of doing it. So there's that too. Um, that's an option. Yeah. And I like, I don't know, I like the way that Smart Art curates their boxes a little bit more than um, Palettefull too. I find like all the products go together really well with the Smart Art, like they've really thought about what's going in their boxes, whereas Palettefull, sometimes it feels like they just throw things together and it's kind of like, you know, how am I supposed to use these products together? Although the last few boxes have been a lot better, I think. Just gonna grab a glass of water here. <clears throat> okay, so I think I like how the blues and the greens are blending. Now I'm gonna go back in and darken up some of those greens. So I really don't have to wipe that off because we're just gonna go in with our dark greens. And I'm gonna take that little mixture of phthalo green and permanent green and I'm gonna start getting it up here as well because there is um, this green part up here. And I'm not gonna blend it right now because I've got too much pigment on my sponge right now. It's just gonna sort of smudge that color in. So I'm gonna leave that and I'm gonna start working on some of my other darks. And I think I will have to go over top a couple of the really dark areas 
and just add a touch of black on just to darken it up like as if you were going to use one of the shade colors or the extra dark colors and that's all they are they just have a little bit of um, black mixed in with them so that's why I really say you really only need you know the pure colors because you can do everything else with that and I'm gonna have to trim my pastel mat here down a little bit because I don't know if my corners got you know messed up in shipping or whatever but I got messed up corners <laughs> okay your first um, let's make our ships out this week very nice very nice I love their channel and I knew they had a box but I've never tried it um, you'll have to watch it I'm streaming later Naomi if you want to come but only coloring nothing fancy what time are you streaming at because I think EB streaming around two I think it's two o'clock my time I think she's an hour behind me but what time are you streaming at so I'm going to get some of this dark in here behind this petal too. So I'm just looking at my reference photo again, just really trying to see where those, those darker darks are and get them in. And like we did with the blue, I'm gonna place them in right now. Then I'll go ahead and blend out edges. Um, I'll unbox when it comes, yeah. You know, this definitely um, makes streaming and doing art tutorials so much more fun and entertaining when you guys are there talking with me as well. So I'm really enjoying this. You stream every Sunday at 10 a.m. MST and then occasionally on Tuesdays. Okay. And I can't remember what time that is my time, but I'll figure it out. It is 11.18 here for me. Going back down here, getting some of these darks in down here. I am three hours ahead of you. Okay, yeah. So I'm just getting a little bit of that dark green in here just to break up um, some of this brighter green here. Okay. I'm going to bring this dark green down a little bit, sort of down and into some of these other greens here. So I'm starting to notice that the pastel mat is starting to fill up a little bit, so that's good. I don't have to do much more layering. We've got most of the white of the paper gone. So basically, probably after this layer, I'm going to blend, and then we'll be done um, with our background, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awful at time conversions too, so don't worry about that. Don't worry about that at all.
Yes, I am Atlantic time zone. Yeah. <laughs> I always like end up Googling like, you know, what time is this in this time zone or what time is this in this time zone just because I'm not really good at that at all. Okay. So I'm gonna get all that green off this and again, I'm gonna go ahead and just start blending our edges of it. Just so it blends into everything really nicely and then we'll do, you know, any last minute adjustments um, and that'll probably be it for today's live stream. And then we'll go ahead and do our flower in the next one. So same time next Sunday, 10 a.m. Atlantic time, if you guys wanna join. Now I'm trying not to make these live streams too, too long, you know, maybe about an hour and a half I'd say maybe up to two hours at the most because I feel like, you know, then people start losing interest or, you know, they don't really want to follow along anymore. But let me guys know if you, you know, care how long they are really because I can always, you know, go longer if we're having fun, if we're chatting, um, you know, if people are painting along or whatever or drawing along, depending what medium that we're using. just wipe off and blend just with this. So the greens that we were using it's sort of like helping to have a little bit of variation in the background too, just sort of like blending all of them into each other. And just lightly tapping over everything. Crafting with EB says, I will be there as long as I'm having time to get ready for mine before. Oh yeah. And I don't imagine because yours goes, I think it's, 2 p.m. for me, so I don't imagine I would be going <laughs> that long, really. I think I would be so exhausted by then. Okay, I might just go back with this light green just one last time, add a little bit of this in to some of the areas. I know I need to darken this green up a little bit, but I just want to brighten a couple areas up. And you guys can see just how many layers this pastel mat can take, right? And just how once it starts to get filled up like this, the colors just blend, you know, themselves together really well. You try three hours max. I was in a group one of the other days and at four hours. Wow, that's a long time. Yeah, I think I would be like tapping out by maybe two hours. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I've ever streamed that long. Even when I was doing like my tutorials, just real time tutorials and not live streams, I'd say after like an hour and a half, I was kind of like really tired, like really exhausted, just even trying to explain what I was doing. I'm like, what color is this? Where am I putting it? What am I doing? I don't know anymore. <laughs> so it was just kind of like, just rambling at that point. So I was like, I need to stop.
All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just take one of these soft tools and I'm going to add this turquoise color in because I really want this to pop. And then I'm just gonna blend that out and I think that's gonna be it for this background here. And I'm switching to the soft tool. If you had another one of these, I could switch. I could switch to the other side or something like that, but I'm just gonna switch to the soft tool. And because we're starting to get enough layers onto the pastel mat, this is gonna blend in really nicely after with some of these colors. And then I think that's really gonna be it. Uh, okay, um, your live streams came in. Okay. You have mods for your live stream, Colorfully Corey. Colorfully Corey. <laughs> I'm going to call you that now. I don't have any mods, but so y'all behave. You guys all behave in here because I don't have any mods yet. Um, I'll be right back. Yep. Hurry back, EB. So I really want this teal color to pop. It's turquoise, but I'm calling it teal. It is what it is. <laughs> sort of when it mixes with the green, it's gonna make like a teal color and that's sort of like what I'm going for, this bright um, turquoisey teal color in some of these areas here. And I want it, you know, a nice pure color in the middle, so that's why I'm choosing to go in with a new tool. I had to go after it got busy. Chat moves too fast. Oh yes, well I am not that famous yet. <laughs> okay, I wanna wipe that one off really well. And for these soft tools, you don't wanna wipe them too hard, even on your paper towel. Actually, I'm gonna get a new piece of paper towel here. And I'm just gonna show you how, just after a few swipes, you know, you're basically getting all the color off of it. And then I'm just gonna start blending this together. And I love using these when I'm sort of wanting to blend everything out together. It does a really nice job. And then I can just keep my um, paper towel here as I'm doing it. And then that way, if I'm picking up too much color and it's going into other colors, then I can just, you know, wipe it off as I'm going. My streams, depending on what I'm doing, I end early or go longer. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I guess depending what you're doing. And depending maybe how many people are there chatting and hanging out. So I'm just sort of blending the edges there. And I hope this hasn't shifted too much. You guys can still see it. And I'm really not pressing hard at this point at all because we've got enough pastel on the paper. It's really just blending it out. It's almost like creamy feeling. So I really don't have to work very hard at all. I'm just barely touching um, with this to really blend, which is nice. Okay, let's work this way now.
Yeah, they ebb and flow away. Well, I really appreciate you guys being here with me in this dream because it's kind of boring, you know, when you're just here talking to yourself, but I love, like, I've realized that I love doing tutorials. I don't know what it is, like, I just really love, like, I don't know, taking my time, explaining what I'm doing, because when I first started art, like I couldn't learn anything from watching a five minute sped up video or a 10 minute sped up video. Like who's going to really learn anything with that? Even if there's voiceover, um, you know, I really had to watch what people were doing. And to be honest, then I just started doing my own thing because I couldn't really find like the tutorials that I was looking for. So I thought, well, you know, let's just try and see how it works. And I always sort of drew and stuff like I loved drawing so you know doing the drawing aspect wasn't too bad for me um, and then I just started playing around with different mediums and honestly like once you get your contrast down pat and you can figure out how light or dark something needs to go depending you know if you are looking for realism or not um, once you get that down and you start being able to master you know, one medium at least, then that transitions w really well. And then you can start playing with other mediums. You know, it might not turn out as good or as nicely as your other ones would be, but it does transition really well. Um, and I just got pastel all over my finger there. So I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm just going to take a drink. And now I'm just going to start blending um, everything else. Actually, I need to darken up some of these greens, so maybe I'll do that real quick. So I don't want too much black in there, but I just need to darken up a little bit of this. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to dab it off onto my paper towel and just darken up some of these greens a little bit. Ugh, and that corner bothers me so much. I don't know if you guys can see it here. Let me pull this down here, but the pastel mat sort of has like this edge that's up and I just, ugh, that's all right. Okay, I'm gonna darken up this here. And I'm gonna take off, that black is really powerful, so. kind of see it up in some of these areas here so I'm just gonna lightly just just a dab really is all you need and then I've got to bring um, they have soft music playing in the background which makes it nice but I try to talk so I don't have dead air yeah, I I try to talk as much as I can too, but sometimes it's like I feel like I'm just explaining the same thing over and over. <laughs> I thought about playing music in the background, um, but I don't know if that would be more distracting or if people would like that. So if you're watching this or if you're watching the replay, let me know down in the comments or in the live chat here now, you know, would you want some music going on as well? Like, is that going to be um, too distracting? for you or would that be nice because I'm totally open to suggestions. Oh, you're loving the background. Thank you so much, EB. That's the fun thing with pastels. It's just, it's layering, like just layer, you know. And it's all about adjusting and then you'll go, oh, I like that. Oh, I don't like that. Um, and then you can kind of just adjust where you need it. I'm gonna bring this dark, ooh, that's really dark. So I'm gonna wipe off really, really well. Smudge that out. I just wanna start bringing this darkness down just a little bit more up here. I'm really wiping it off. You can see it's a little bit darker here. 
want to be careful because we don't want to go too dark with that black. I like it without music. I have it playing because I can't stand the quiet in my streams. Okay. So because where we are doing a little bit of talking and stuff, then maybe that makes a difference, I suppose. I suppose if nobody was here and I was just, you know, saying, okay, I'm doing this, and then it's 20 minutes of me doing it and not talking, that might be <laughs> a little boring and a little weird. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure this is wiped off really, really well. And you know what? I don't want to risk any of that um, black getting into the rest of our color. So I'm actually going to just switch to another tool here. This is another clean tool. That's why I like having a lot of tools ready to go on the side because you never know when you're going to need them. And I'm just going to start blending. So I'm going to start just blending all of the colors together, really. So we did the blue really already. So I'm going to go in with the greens and just make sure everything's really blended. And because we've got so many layers on now, you know, the pastel's really stuck um, to the paper, so it's not really moving as much. Um, so I can really just go lightly and blend over top of everything. And then I think once we get this all blended out, then that's gonna be it for today. And we will start on our flower next time. So I'm still trying to focus, like if I was blending, you know, colored pencils or whatever, I wanna go from light to dark. So I'm still seeing where my light greens are. And then I'm gonna blend those into darker areas. And like I was doing before, if I feel like I'm picking up a little bit too much of that light green, just wipe it off. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to think of things to say. So I'm going to do all these light greens first, then we'll get into our darks. So, and it might look weird right now, but once we get this flower in, it sort of is gonna bring focus to this as well. And having those colors over here in the background, like there's another flower going on, um, it's gonna contrast well with this. Like, it, it might look weird right now, but trust the process. And because this is pastel matte, once you get the flower in, if you decide you don't like this, you can go ahead and layer over top of it. Um, no big deal, right? because this will still take layers over top of what we've got down, but I'm just pretty happy with, with how this is turning out so far. So let me know how you guys are liking the background so far or how it's turned out. So I'm actually going to go in with a different tool and I had dropped one on the floor earlier. Where did it go? There it is. And I'm going to just start blending this here. Actually, we'll blend this green up here first. So I want most of it off so it doesn't blend too much into our um, magenta color there. Just going to dab just lightly. So it lightly blends a little bit. Um, I'm glad you live stream early on Sundays. You give me something to do and I enjoy the artwork and your different kinds of art supplies. Well, thank you so much, EB. Oh, and you guys are loving it. You can't wait to see more. I know I'm really excited um, to get into the pastel pencils next week because that's going to just be so fun. So fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that spot's orange now. <laughs> So I'm going to blend some of these yellow areas here. So I'm sort of blending those edges, wiping it off when I need to.
And I want to be careful in here where the colors are so different. I'm just, you know, doing some dabbing. Really, I'm not really doing any circle motions. I just want to get the, the two edges just to blur slightly together. But if I move them too much into each other, then it's just going to muddy it up. Um, Heather says, thanks so much, Naomi. This is looking lovely. Really appreciate all the instructions. I really want to try pastels and watercolors. Looking forward to seeing how to do the flower in the foreground. Oh, thank you so much, Heather. And thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and I do have some real-time tutorial, uh, watercolor tutorials on my channel, so they're not live streams. I've just recently started doing it in a live stream format, which I absolutely love, but you can always go check those out. But um, I had somebody mention, it might have been UEB, or I don't know if it was um, Happy K Artist in the last stream, or somebody had mentioned to do a, um, a landscape, a seascape, actually. So maybe, unless you guys have other suggestions, we could do a seascape uh, using some watercolors in the next tutorial. And I'm just going in here and doing the same thing, just lightly going over these yellows and oranges um, as well, because I want everything to just blend together and blur out like there's no, you know, defined edges, really. That's the, the background that I'm sort of going for. And again, I'm trying to stay in the lighter areas first, and then I will blend into our darker areas. So let me go know if you guys have any suggestions for the next project that you want to do. Because I am certainly open to suggestions. I use mostly watercolors, colored pencils, watercolor pencils, um, ink tents, blocks or pencils, pastels. Um, I'm experimenting with gouache. I've used that a few times. But I mean, if you guys want to do gouache, we can figure it out on stream together. Um, yeah, so I basically use those mediums. Am I forgetting anything? I've got some, you know, real-time tutorials of the ones that I I use the most. So feel free to check those out and leave suggestions. Okay. So I'm just kind of sitting back, assessing, seeing if there's anything that I want to change. I might, might just brighten up this magenta just slightly in here, just in a couple of areas. And I'm just taking it and lightly dabbing it on. I really want that magenta color at the top here, but I've got to be careful around that green. but I really want this color to kind of come through like it's another one of these flowers over here. And I think that's what it is in the reference photo, but. Um, that is why I try to change up most of the time because I get bored over the same thing over and over. Yeah, and the same thing with me. Like if I use the same medium over and over, I'm just kind of like, it's the same thing. You can do different subjects, obviously, um, but I find after a while it, it is a lot of just the same thing over and over. Just gonna put this yellow back in here. I sort of got some orange there by mistake. No big deal. Okay, so I could keep fiddling with this forever and ever, but I think I'm actually quite happy as I'm adding more yellow in down here. <laughs> I think I'm actually quite happy with how this is turning out. And I'm really excited to get to our um, pastel pencils next time. So Heather, I do have the pastel pencils listed in the description down below. Um, if you don't have, I'm using the Stabilo Carbothello and the Pit Pastels. But if you don't have both sets, then just pick whatever ones. I've put whether it's a warm red, a cool red, whatever. So just pick whichever ones that you have that are closest to it. Um, I always like the live stream format so I can ask questions if I need to. Absolutely, and that's why I started doing this format because I figured you guys could ask questions as I'm doing it. And even if you're not painting along right now, because I usually suggest, you know, watch a tutorial through the first time and then that way when you go ahead to do it, like you know what's coming up 
um, and you can follow along a little easier. But if you are following along, you know, feel free to ask me any questions anytime we're doing this. Um, Corey's got Pit Pastels. Thank you so much for streaming today. You are so welcome. Same time next week, next Sunday. I have the Carbothellos, so anything with those would be awesome. And then watercolor pans and pencils. Okay, so I will be using a lot of the Carbothellos next week, but if you need, you know, replacements from the Pit Pastels, ask me, because I have both of them written down. So if you need one from the other set, then just ask me and I can let you know what number that is. Um, yes, so I enjoyed this stream. You are an amazing artist in person. Well, thank you so much, EB. You guys are so sweet today. I could just stay on here forever. You guys are giving me all the compliments. <laughs> um, I just love this art community. You know, I just love you guys so much. So do you guys have any last minute things for me or I am going to wrap up today's stream and then we'll come back next week, same time, and we'll do our flower. And again, I have my super awesome Gryffindor cup here that my lovely husband got me. I am a Gryffindor. He is a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Just so you guys know. All right. Nope. And thanks so much. This has been a great stream. Look forward to next week. Well, I look forward to all of you guys being here next week. Um, bring your pastel pencils. Let me know down in the comments below what do you want to see for the next one because we should be able to finish our flower next week within an hour, hour and a half, I'm going to guess. And thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye. And it just takes a minute to stop the stream.